2016 research by IMF, Inequality, Gender Gaps and Economic Growth, comparative evidence for Sub-Saharan Africa region remains to be the highest and is declining slower than other regions globally. However, gender inequality in food security continues to be a global problem. the countries worldwide women are more likely than men to face food insecurity. Research have continually shown that gender inequality and differences are relevant factors to take into account when studying the cause of effects of climate change, food insecurity and water supply. In this regard, the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands held a round table meeting to discuss the opportunities for advancement of women participation in food security, water supply and climate initiative in Kenya. Ambassador of the Kingdom of Netherlands to Kenya of France McCain says 70% of paying jobs go to men, thus creating an imbalance in economic distribution. Ambassador France adds that climatic change is posing a challenge to food production due to unpredictable weather patterns and locust invasion. It's uh, very well known that uh, women participate uh, for a great part in agriculture, um, even 80% uh, uh, of them, uh, but they are not uh, participating in, uh, let's say, the paid jobs that are available in the same sector. So where men uh, take about 70% of the paid jobs in agriculture, uh, women take about 80% of the jobs, but only 10% of them have access to credit, for instance, and, and other inputs. So that imbalance uh, was addressed this morning and how that can be sort of taken up in programs, uh, put on agendas in a way that uh, effectively uh, this imbalance can be addressed. And I'm very happy to note uh, that there have been, uh, uh, has been an exchange of uh, practical examples that would allow organizations, individuals uh, to put uh, gender and uh, gender imbalance and gender transformation uh, on the agenda in a way that it's also being monitored and uh, and kept track of. Father, he says the government is trying its best to combat the situation. However, it's difficult since it's so sudden and such calamities have no warnings. Well, in terms of preparedness, uh, all we have is uh, examples from West Africa uh, where the occurrence of uh, locust uh, swarms is more prevalent than, than in East Africa. Uh, but, and there is uh, certain poisons that are, can be stored in order to be prepared. You need the planes to be prepared. But uh, the question is, is it fair to have this all ready and updated because you can't store them forever? for something that occurs every 15 years, 20 years, sometimes like here, um, almost 50 years, I understand. So is that a fair proposition? That is a very difficult question because it costs a lot of money and uh, a lot of maintenance of uh, all the equipment and uh, renewal of the pests when they are not, of the pesticides when they are not being used. So. Yes, uh, there should be more swift action possible, uh, but to be fully prepared requires an inordinate uh, amount of money. When it comes to the farmers, they are obviously victims, and, uh, but we know that there are crops uh, that locusts don't like. There is actually stuff that they don't like. So, and we also know that they go for the softer tissue rather than the hard kernels. Uh, so sometimes a swarm has visited an area, but then maybe the leaves are eaten, but, but the, the grains are still there. But there's always damage, uh, lots of damage. So it is a very challenging uh, phenomenon. And to be prepared is not easy. I, I will just admit to that, but uh, I think we had a warning call and uh, we can do what we can, we should do what we can in order to be prepared for the next occurrence. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has started training 300 National Youth Service and OIS trainees as part of its action plan to boost the government of Kenya's surveillance and control of the worst desert locust invasion the country has seen in 70 years. 
In addition, 300 trainees will participate in future capacity building exercise at the NYS College. The outcome of these deliberations are aimed at making Kenya attain its vision 2030. Dereva Kilari, report.